Volume 3 of the St. Germain series, The I Am Discourses by the Ascended Masters St. Germain. Dedication This series of books is dedicated in deepest eternal love and gratitude to our beloved Masters, St. Germain, Jesus, Nada, the Great Divine Director, to the Great White Brotherhood, the Brotherhood at the Royal Teton, the Brotherhood at Mount Shasta, the Great Ones from Venus, and those other Ascended Masters whose loving help has been direct and without limit. Editor's Note The words of Jesus, as quoted throughout this series of books by Godfrey Ray King and the Ascended Masters, are the authentic statements he uttered, although they do not always agree verbally with some versions of the Christian Bible. This fact should not surprise the truth-seeker who understands the difficulties encountered in translation and realizes how many times the Bible has been translated in the past 1,600 years. Jesus has spoken again on the visible light and sound ray and made this point clear, saying, It is unfortunate, indeed, that some of the scriptural statements have been clouded by human concepts. Yet I am thankful, indeed, that many have remained unaltered. Lotus Ray King Tribute At the present time, the attention of mankind is being drawn to the conscious understanding and use of the words, I am, by the Ascended Masters, Saint Germain, Jesus, and others of the Ascended Host, who are pouring out ceaselessly the great light to release freedom, peace, and perfection. The cosmic command for the permanent golden age has been given and must now manifest on this planet. The great ascended masters have worked for centuries preparing for the expansion of light that is now flooding the entire system to which this earth belongs. The great cosmic law has begun the release and increase of that light which compels all things to come into perfect divine order wherever it flows. These great ones have always been the custodians of the eternal inner understanding concerning the use of the great creative word, I am. They and they alone have been able to give the complete understanding concerning what occurs when those two words, I am, are used. They have been the elder brothers, protectors, guardians, and infallible teachers of mankind throughout the centuries. The ascended masters are the only infallible source of instruction to the humanity of this earth because they are wholly divine and one with the God-Self of every individual. They are the living fulfillment of the law they teach and are the only ones who have manifested complete victory over so-called death. They are the full manifestation of that light and love which rule the universe and which maintain divine order throughout infinity. The release of their combined light is taking place and flooding the earth at the present time. All that is not of the light is consumed thereby. Their light will continue to expand throughout this planet until all its humanity has made the ascension also, and the earth itself becomes a blazing sun whirling in its appointed path in space. To these great ascended masters, Mankind owes all the good it has ever received or drawn forth because they are the way and means by which the infinite God-Self expands its perfection through the finite activities of personality. This earth and its humanity 
are entering into the I am age, and therefore the full use of this I am knowledge must be understood and utilized by the individuals who live here in the present and near future. The great cosmic beings, the ascended masters, and angelic hosts have given tremendous protection to America and her people, especially over the last five years. To all individuals who will call unto them in the name of the mighty I am present, keep their feelings harmonized and pour out intense love continually to their own mighty I am present, will be given assistance without limit. This book is especially charged with St. Germain's Ascended Master Consciousness and Love and that of the other Ascended Masters concerned with this activity to bring protection, freedom, illumination, and perfection to all who read or contact it, that all may express mastery and also make their ascension. It is the privilege of every student of light at this time to call in the name of the I Am Presence with all earnestness and love to these great ones to protect America, the government and her people, to illumine all officials of the government, to perfect all within her borders, and to compel obedience everywhere unto the light of God that never fails. Godfrey Ray King Forward the 33 discourses contained in this book were dictated over a visible light and sound ray in our home during 1932 by the Ascended Master St. Germain and those other Ascended Masters directly concerned with this activity. The sound of his voice was physically audible to everyone in the room. At times his visible, tangible presence also stood within the room when he radiated the power and energy of the light rays to accomplish special work. The training and preparation for him to do this at the present crisis of the outer world was given us over a period of thirty years that it might be accomplished at this time and assistance from the ascended masters come forth in this way to protect and free all individuals who make conscious effort to correct themselves and attain mastery over all things on this earth. Never before, except in the retreats of the great white brotherhood, has such intensified transcendent instruction concerning the I am been given to individuals. Not for thousands of years have the true inner instruction and use of the sacred flame been taught to mankind as St. Germain and others of the Ascended Masters have revealed. Permission for them to be explained to students as given forth in these discourses has been granted to us by these great ones. Such instruction as is herein contained has never been given to students until after a three-year probation in the retreats. The condition of the outer world at the present time is such that those who sincerely seek the light and want the constructive way of life must have more than human help if they are to survive over the present period of chaos, which is the accumulated discord generated by humanity and mass through the centuries, and which is pressing heavily upon the outer experience of individuals today. The need of protection and help for the children of earth is so great at the present hour that the great ascended masters and legion of light have let the bars down, so to speak, and have released this inner understanding of the mighty I Am Presence into the outer life of mankind, that all who want the light and will make conscious effort to attain their own freedom and mastery may have the assistance which will give them the eternal victory. Only fragments of the real understanding of the I Am Presence have been given to the outer world until now. The Ascended Master Saint Germain says, It is the most important understanding mankind can ever have, and there is no freedom nor perfection for the individual 
except through this conscious application. He considers it of such paramount importance that he dictated more than 33 discourses in which he explains what happens in the outer life of the individual when one says, I am. He also says, nothing will bless the individual to so great a degree as the conscious understanding of this creative word. When the phrase, mighty I am presence, come forth, is used throughout this series of books, it is always a call to the God presence to pour forth or release the outpouring of perfection which the one making the call desires. It is always thought, felt, written, or spoken with a feeling of intense love. It is always a call to God, the mighty I am presence, to establish perfection everywhere, and thus let God's will, perfection, be made manifest on earth. When a command is given, it is always the outer self calling unto God, and in the name of that mighty I am presence, commanding substance and energy to obey the decree given, which is the self-conscious effort required in order to open the door for the intelligence of the I am to release its perfect manifestation. This book not only carries the ascended master's understanding of the I am, but is charged with St. Germain's ascended master consciousness and the ray of light and love from his heart, which is the ascended master's feeling and comprehension of its full power forever self-sustained. May this book of I Am Discourses anchor the attention of all who read or contact it so powerfully upon each individual's own divinity that the full ascended master's consciousness of the mighty I Am Presence shall fill the earth and release with the power of a thousand suns the eternal dominion of the light of God that never fails. Godfrey Ray King The I Am Discourses by the Ascended Master, Saint Germain Discourse number one October 3, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou infinite mighty presence, thou all-pervading principle of life, we give praise and thanks for thy wondrous activity through all outer presence. Out of thy mighty essence comes all that is. And oh, that humanity might understand, thou art ever and forever self-sustained. Thou mighty, active principle of life, surge forth in the outer activity of mankind and manifest thy supreme justice now in all places. Mighty Presence of Light, God in action, govern the minds of mankind, holding them to truth and justice, and see that thy messengers are placed in all official positions. Let naught of the outer interfere, that none of humanity may accept any thought of deception. Mighty presence of God in action, surge forth in the minds of all, expressing thy conquering presence. Greetings. I bring you greetings from the perfected ones who are watching closely over and ministering to all. The Discourse Life 
in all its activities everywhere manifest, is God in action. And it is only through lack of the understanding of applied thought and feeling that mankind is constantly interrupting the pure flow of that perfect essence of life, which would, without interference, naturally express its perfection everywhere. The natural tendency of life is love, peace, beauty, harmony, and opulence. For life cares not who uses it, but is constantly surging to pour more of its perfection into manifestation, always with that lifting process which is ever inherent within itself. I am. I am is the activity of that life. How strange it is that students with sincere interest do not seem to get the true meaning of those two words. When you say and feel, I am, you release the spring of eternal, everlasting life to flow on its way unmolested. In other words, you open wide the door to its natural flow. When you say, I am not, you shut the door in the face of this mighty energy. I am is the full activity of God. Having placed before you so often the truth of God in action, I wish you to understand its first expression in individualization. The first expression of every individual everywhere in the universe, either in spoken word, silent thought, or feeling, is I am, recognizing its own conquering divinity. The student, endeavoring to understand and apply these mighty yet simple laws, must stand guard more strictly over his thought and expression, in word or otherwise. For every time you say, I am not, I cannot, I have not, you are, whether knowingly or unknowingly, throttling that great presence within you. This is just as tangible as if you placed your hands about the throat of an outer form. Only with the outer form, your thought governing the hand, you can release it at any time. But when you make a declaration using the words, I am not, you set in motion mighty, limitless energy that continues to act unless it is recalled and the imperfection consumed and transmuted. This shows you the enormous power you have to qualify this mighty energy of God. And I tell you, beloved students, dynamite is less dangerous, for that would but liberate you from the body, while these thoughts, sent forth ignorantly and ungoverned, bind you upon the wheel of re-embodiment indefinitely. Thus you can see how important it is for you to know what you are doing when you thoughtlessly use wrong expressions because you are using the most divine principle of activity in the universe. I am. Do not misunderstand me. This is no idle, foreign, or oriental expression, but the highest principle of life, used and expressed throughout every civilization that has ever existed. For the first expression every self-conscious form of life gives is I am. It is only afterwards, in its contact with outer, wrongly qualified activity, that it begins to accept anything less than I am. Now, dear students, do you not see that when you say I am sick, you are just reversing this principle of life, which is naturally all perfection, thus requalifying it by your willful ignorance with something which it never naturally possessed? Through long centuries of willful misunderstanding, humanity has charged the very atmosphere about them with falsehood and unreality. For I need not say to you that when you say I am sick, it is an abject falsehood in respect to your divinity 
which cannot be sick. Does this sound harsh to you? Then I say think it over, and you will see what a blessing and release it can be to you. I say to you, dear students, in the name of God, stop using these wrong expressions of your Godhead, of your divinity, for it is impossible for you to have freedom as long as you continue to do it. I cannot speak of this to you too often, that when you really recognize and accept the mighty presence of God in you, there are positively no adverse conditions. Stop, I say to you, giving power to the outer conditions, persons, places, or things. And in the name of God, every time you find yourself starting to say, I am sick, I am broke, I am not feeling well, instantly reverse this fatal condition to your progress and declare silently with all the intensity of your being, I am, which is all health, opulence, perfection, happiness, peace, and the power to recognize perfection in yourself and everywhere else. When you think of the expression, I am, it means that you know you have God in action expressing in your life. Do not let these false expressions continue to govern and limit you. I plead with you, dear ones, everywhere. Do not continue to use these wrong expressions, thinking that in some hocus-pocus way you may slide past reaping the result. It simply cannot be done. Many of you know that they use the branding iron on the western frontier as a recognition of ownership by the ranchmen. So great is my desire to have you recognize and hold fast to the active presence of God in you that I almost long for a branding iron to brand those words I am into your consciousness for constant use, that you could not be drawn off the recognition, acceptance, and use of that mighty, glorious presence of God, which you are. I trust that all who may hear or read these words will feel the power and the mighty conviction of this truth that goes with them, leaping into action wherever expressed. If at any time anything less than perfection attempts to make an appearance in your experience, declare vehemently that it is not true and that you accept only God, which is perfection in your life everywhere manifest. As long as you give way to accepting false appearances, you will have them expressed in your life and experience. It is not, dear student, a matter of belief on your part, whether you accept these truths or not. But they are the law, proven through long centuries of experience, and are placed before you for your freedom. Awaken to the fact that your thought and feeling in the past have built, created the inharmony of your world today. Arise, I say, arise and walk with the Father, the I Am, that you may be free from these limitations. There is only one thing in this universe that can surround you with limitation, and that is accepting the outer appearance instead of the mighty, active presence of God in you. The Western world likes to fool itself with the idea that it refuses to accept the ancient and Eastern idea of sorcery, in other words, the misuse of the spiritual powers. The worst kind of sorcery is being used in the political fields today that has ever been known in the history of mankind through the use of mental power, wrongly qualified. If this same tremendous mental force were used in just the reverse way, to know that there is only God in action, in every individual filling official places, the sender of that quality or truth 
would not only be free himself, but the political world would be filled with freedom and justice. Then we would experience a natural world, a world of God in action, everywhere present. It is today as it was at one time in Egypt. Those who misuse the mental power are binding themselves to the rack of inharmony, embodiment after embodiment. Take the stand. I do not take on conditions from anybody or anything about me, but God, good, and I am always God commanded. You need to acquire the habit of stilling yourself. Sit down three or four times a day and simply still the outer self. This will let the energy be supplied. Learn to command and control the energy in your body. If you want the energy still, be still. If you want the energy active, be active. You must stand up, face a thing, and rise above it. There is no other way. The student should watch in every way for habits and break them up. He should not have to be told, but must look within himself and uproot whatever is not perfect. This brings a freedom not possible in any other way. The holding on of old habits is just like wearing old worn-out garments. The student must not wait for someone else to think these things out for him. He must do it himself. It is not possible for anyone to do it but himself. In this work and under this radiation, everything that is latent in the individual is being brought forth to be consumed. Watch that the attention does not become fixed on the thing you do not want. It is perfectly ridiculous to keep recalling things which have not worked out. If you have built your limitations for centuries and can, by this attention and self-effort, free yourself in a few years, isn't it worth it? Is it not marvelous? A humorous sense of getting away from a thing is sometimes the quickest and most powerful way of doing it. For a buoyant, joyous feeling releases the energy that many times enables a very wonderful manifestation to take place. If one will buckle down to brass tacks and call on the law of forgiveness, he can then consume all past creations in the consuming flame and be free. You must be conscious that the flame is the active presence of God doing the consuming. The freedom of God is here in action. When you have a feeling to do a certain constructive thing, go ahead, stick to it, and do it if the heavens fall. Whether the manifestation comes now or not should not enter into your consciousness at all. Even when students only know a thing intellectually, they should not allow the mind to keep recalling wrong conditions when they know what this activity does to their success. It is unbelievable that people will not conquer this enemy in their consciousness. No student can ever gain the victory until he stops turning back to the old negative conditions he is trying to get rid of. The whole work of a teacher is to get some means and explanation over to the student of the activity of acceptance. What the mind accepts is that which the individual agrees with through his attention by letting the two become one. When the mind accepts and agrees with a thing or condition, the individual decrees it into his world. Whatever you let the attention rest upon, you are agreeing with and accepting, because through the attention you have let the mind become one with it. If an individual were to see a rattlesnake coiled, would he walk right up to be struck? 
Certainly not. Yet this is what students are doing when they let their attention turn back to their troubles. Such habits are only past momentum given a specific quality. There are only two activities in life, and if you will not let the inner govern according to its plan of perfection, then the outer must. When a constructive picture is flashed to your mind, it is a reality. When you recall it as a mental picture and hold it again, it calls forth the reality. One can become so aware of his own God presence that at any time he can see and feel its radiance pouring out to him. For things it does not want, the outer has all the confidence in the world. It is up to the student to compel it to have the same confidence for the perfection of God that it has for the imperfection of the senses. The student must always rely on himself. He must always think, What can I do to intensify this activity from the hints given? Benediction Mighty perfected ones, As we receive thy magic circle of protection, as we receive and are enfolded in thy mighty opulent presence, O Master within, we accept fully that opulence made manifest in our outer experience and use. We give praise and thanks for thy wisdom in its use. We give praise and thanks that we have the full strength to accept only thy mighty active presence at all times, and to refuse acceptance to anything unlike thee. <laughs>